Welcome to a venomous snake tutorial presented by Musa Masala and Jewel Sylvester of Reptile Rentals. This presentation is a part of Musa Masala's Good Trekker series, focusing on safe and healthy mountain travel. Jewel Sylvester has been working with venomous snakes for over 40 years with zoos and in the film industry. He is a professional handler. Never pick up any wild reptile, venomous or not. Be kind and smart. The purpose of this tutorial is to introduce you to the three venomous snakes found in Southern California, dispel common myths surrounding these snakes, and give you a plan of action if you or someone with you is bitten by a venomous snake. Now, here's Jules. Now this innocuous looking rattlesnake, sorry, the there. that little guy there, this is uh, the USA's most dangerous rattlesnake. This is what they call the Mojave Green Rattlesnake or the Mojave Rattlesnake. And uh, this is an average to large one. And they live in the high desert, uh, Palmdale, Lancaster area. If you step on this guy, he will bite you and you'll be going to the hospital and you'll be very, very sick. And yes, you could die because that's the most powerful venom we have on a rattlesnake in the US. It's neurotoxin, basically, nerve poison, very fast acting. See that? And shut. Open. Now that's the length of the fangs. They fold up along the top jaw. Hell of a thing, eh? Just that will do so much damage to you. And put them back. They've got a bit of venom there. Ah, catch on. That jaws are shut. See how they fold up? Look at the beautiful color, olive color. He also has a bit of hemotoxin. It's nerve poison and blood poison. So you get a cocktail of uh, some terrible stuff that will knock your socks off. The most dangerous rattlesnake we have in the United States. For his size, nothing to beat it. Let's talk about residual venom. He strikes, he hits a piece of material, hits your shoe, um, gets it on your skin. No effect on your skin, by the way, unless it gets in a cut. Now, I'm talking of that, if it's on your skin, and you do have a scratch, or someone comes to wipe it off and they've got cuts or wounds, if any venom gets into a cut, it's a bite. Not a very big one, but it's a bite, and you will get a reaction. Rule of thumb is when you're out in the desert, anywhere in California, walking around at night, good shoes and a bloody flashlight. So our next snake is, uh, it is found in Southern California, mostly down towards the Arizona border. It's called the uh, Western Diamondback Rattlesnake. It is the second largest rattlesnake in the country. The biggest one being the Eastern Diamondback from Florida. So you don't want to go too close. That's too deep. Right there, you can probably reach about here. And he's probably just short of four foot six. You know that he has not struck yet. That's because this is not warm. This is not warm, but at the camera. Yeah. If it was against the light and I brought it down here, he'd probably strike it right away. If I put my hand down there, he would definitely like it. This snakes are right here, in this area here, to about here. That's most rattlesnakes. These guys are so big, they can actually strike you almost up to the knee. The amount of venom that comes out of these guys is huge. I mean, there's a, there's a teaspoon of each gland on the other side of the head. All it takes is a drop to knock you on your, on your, on your butt. One thing about baby snakes, let's get into the baby snake thing. Well, the babies are more dangerous, absolute rubbish. The babies are exactly the same as the parent. Um, they can control the venom. They are not any different to the parent, so they're exactly the same, so the venom is exactly the same. They can control the venom. And the reason they are more dangerous than the adults is because they're smaller and you do not see them. So you're walking through the bush and you come across the rattlesnake. Here you are, you are four feet away from the rattlesnake. What should you do? He's making that noise, he's staring at you, he's very angry. What should you do? Well, obviously the first thing you don't do is jump around and get him. Oh, look, a snake. There we are, and it's safe. Nobody's ever been bitten by running away from a snake. So you just go, oops, beg your pardon. The next one we're gonna do is the Southern Pacific Rattlesnake, and that is the one rattlesnake that's found in the LA Basin. Come on, 
Now that's a pretty good warning. And it stops. I'm now far away and what am I? Three foot six. I'm right here. That's it. That's the strap of six inches. So you walk into the bush. How you doing there, buddy? See what I mean? He struck. He wants me to go away. That was just like a little. <laughs> no, stay there. Stay there. He'll be able to hit you in the dead of night. He can't hear you. He can smell you, and he can't see you. But he has heat pits right here. So within three to four feet on a dark night, he knows exactly where you are. So if you're walking barefoot, you'll see that foot come, bang, right on your foot. If you're walking with uh, just tennis shoes on. He sees the difference in temperature between your tennis shoe and your ankle. Bump, you'll hit the ankle. That really makes you think. He knows where you are. It's like predator. All over the place. Very clever. But he doesn't want to waste his venom on you. He just wants you to go away. He'd rather keep the venom. The venom is what he needs for hunting, killing, digesting. A friend of mine was bitten by one this size, bitten on the hand. Within 20 minutes, he was in so much pain, he wanted to cut his own hand off. And the guy was over 250 pounds. The big man. He was five days in ICU, 34 vials of antivenin, two more days in the hospital just to make sure he didn't keel over, and they gave him a bill for a quarter of a million dollars. It really makes you think. When you talk money, it's like, you know what, I think I won't touch that snake. Good idea. I've been catching snakes for 50 years so far. Touch wood. Haven't been bitten by anything that counts. And when I say anything that counts, I mean anything with venom. And by the way, Venom is injected, poison is ingested. This is not a poisonous snake, this is a venomous snake. Frogs are poisonous, snakes are venomous. Ooh, see, then you learned something right there. These are the signs and symptoms of evenomation. There may be one or two noticeable fey marks with minor bleeding. Pain at bite site that can get worse with time and increase in area. Redness, swelling, and tenderness. Nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, often caused by anxiety. Some patients will have a metallic taste in the mouth. These signs and symptoms could come on later or rapidly. Difficulty breathing, weakness, difficulty moving or controlling limbs, chest pain, blister-like formations, and neurological difficulties. Here's what you can do if you or someone with you is bitten by a venomous snake. Remove everyone from the area around the snake. Do not attempt to capture or kill the snake. Only trained professionals should attempt to move a venomous snake. The antivenom is the same for all bites. The snake is not necessary for treatment. Call 911. If not available, begin immediate evacuation to appropriate care. Remove any jewelry or restrictive clothing from the bite area. Try to keep the victim calm. This may not be easy. Clean and wash the bite area and the area around it, taking precaution to not come in contact with venom. Wear gloves. Immobilize the limb in an extended position. Remember, cell phone, 911, evacuate. First responders, follow your local protocols and remember, taking control of the scene and the decision making of a trained professional can be the difference between a positive or negative outcome for the patient. Quickly, what you can expect when you arrive at the hospital. One, observation for signs of evenomation, blood tests, pain remediation, possible tetanus booster. Two. If blood tests and visual observation shows the need for antivenom, the administration of Crofab. Crofab is the antivenom used for all types of pit viper evenomations in the U.S. 3. Continuation of administration of antivenom until reversal of signs and symptoms is achieved. 4. Continued observation for worsening outcome or possible allergic reaction to venom or antivenom. 5. You'll be released from the hospital after the physician finds the patient stable. Often symptoms can reappear and necessitate a return to care. Now, having said that, that between 17 and 25% of venomous snake bites are dry bites. The snake just gave you a very polite warning. He didn't inject venom. Do you not go to the hospital? No, you go to the hospital because you've been bitten by a venomous snake. You don't know if you've been envenomed. So go there and they'll keep you there for about eight hours. Okay, let's talk about snake myths and treatment. For example, if you get bitten by a rattlesnake, what did you used to do? Well, they used to cut, suck, do all sorts of terrible things, tourniquets, none of that works. Don't cut, don't suck, don't electrocute. Tourniquets, out. Electricity, out. Sucking, out. 
cutting out. Gunpowder, whiskey, set it on fire, doesn't work, it just damages the skin some more. Immobilize, go to hospital. Cell phone, cell phone, cell phone. If you have a cell phone, use the cell phone. Did I mention the cell phone? The cell phone is really important, that's a lifesaver. And don't forget the cell phone. I get asked all the time, Jules, do you have a snake bite kit? I said, what kit would that be? You know, they'll get one with a syringe. No, don't waste your money. Immobilize, cell phone, go to hospital. Chances are you'll live much longer than you would do a little sucky, cutty, bitey, bitey, suck, blow up, electric, zzz. don't do any of that. Just go to the hospital, cell phone, immobilize, good. That's it. Keep it simple. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs>